All right, how y'all doing today? Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to go over a few tools that I've discovered along my journey that honestly it doesn't even matter whether you're beginner, intermediate, advanced trader, whatever you are in your journey. Um, add these to your trading plan. I can almost guarantee you it, uh, it'll help you pull more profits and help level up your trading. All right, because um, when I started adding these to my daily routine, Honestly, I saw huge improvements because, you know, you can't just go into the market um, thinking you're just going to look at a chart quickly and pull profits from it. There's a lot of different factors happening and a lot of reasons why price moves the way it does. Price action is very important, don't get me wrong. And understanding how to read a price chart is very important. But there's other things that you should be um, you should be using and you should understand as well that are happening on a day to day basis. All right. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be babypips.com. All right. So this is a website designed mainly towards un getting a basic understanding of what the Forex market is all about. Um, and they, they run you through different courses. Um, it's their school of pipsology. So if you haven't actually done that yet, uh, I highly suggest actually going through it. It doesn't take that long. You'll be done it, uh, probably a couple of weeks if you put your, uh, put your time in, but, uh, you'll get a very good understanding of the Forex market. However, on their website, they do have some tools that I thought were very interesting um the first two once you get a good grasp on uh trading the first two you don't really need later on but at the start definitely take a look at those the third one here the gain and loss percentage calculator i highly recommend using this on a daily basis to see where you're at and we're gonna look at that in just a moment so let's pull up their website here so this is babypips.com and once you get here, um, you're going to want to go to the tools tab over here, open that up. Then they have a few different ones, the pivot point calculator, not necessarily needed. You pull up a pivot point um, indicator on your chart and it'll do the exact same thing. However, so let's look first at the pip value calculator. This is important to know because you want to know how much you're risking per pip. Uh, based on the position size that you're trading, right? So let's say you're trading Euro USD. It's trading roughly 121, um, but then you wanted to trade 10,000 units, right? Or you want to trade one mini lot. Well, if you're trading USD currency, that's going to amount to one dollar per pip, whether that's in your favor or against you. You're going to either make or lose one dollar every pip that pair moves. All right. Now let's say you want to trade one full standard lot. All right, you're going to be risking ten dollars per pip. So if it moves uh, twenty pips, you're going to be risking two hundred dollars on that trade, or you're going to be looking to gain two hundred dollars on that trade. All right. So this is very important to understand. Um, but using round units like this or standard lot sizes. Um, they, they are easy to calculate. If your broker allows you to do um, units, you can adjust that accordingly, right? So you can trade like 4,500 units on some brokers. You'll be risking 45 cents per pip, all right? So it's very important to understand this. Uh, but once you get a good grasp on trading, you, you'll kind of... You'll, you'll just know what you're risking based on the units that you're trading, right? All right, so let's go back. Um, let's look at the position size calculator. This one is very important as a risk management tool. All right, so again, let's say we're trading USD currency. We got an account balance of $1,000. We want to risk 2.5% on this trade. Now, based on every trade is going to be slightly different based on the structure of the market and where you're going to be putting your stop loss, right? So let's say one trade allows for a 10 pip stop loss. 
it's going to be a nice little scalp. You just want to, um, you got a very good entry and you're not expecting a big move, 10 to 20 pips, one to two risk to reward. All right. So now if you're risking two and a half percent on your thousand dollar account, you're going to be looking at a 25,000 unit trade. All right. You're going to be wanting to enter in with 25,000 units, risking only $25. $25, 2.5% of $1,000. All right, so 25,000 units, 0.25 standard lots, 2.5 mini lots. All right, now let's say you're going to need a little bit wider stop loss and you need a 30 pip stop loss. Now, you should only be trading that amount of units 8,333 all right um, and then you still have the same amount of risk still two and a half percent but you got to reduce your position size because you're risking more your stop loss is further so price is going to move further against you if it if that happens right so you got to reduce your units the wider the stop loss so play around with this. This is very important to understand. Um, as you go along, you will get a good grasp of it and understand how much you're risking per um, per pips on your stop loss, right? So at first, definitely play around with this and use it to your advantage. All right. Now this one here, this one I feel is very important. Um, let's say you got a thousand dollar account. This one is going to basically show you on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, however you wanna look at it and approach it. Let's say today on my $1,000 account, I made $50. All right, now that would have been a 5% gain, which is pretty good, it's decent for one day's work. 5% uh, gain, it's not bad at all. Um, so now, your account now is $1,050. Now to get back to your original $1,000, you can afford to lose 4.8%. You gained 5%, but now if you wanna stay above that $1,000 mark, you can only afford to risk 4.8%. However, let's say you took a loss on that trade of the same amount. Now, you only took a 5% loss, but because now your balance is 950, you now need to make 5.3% on that 950 to be back at your $1,000 starting point. All right, now let's say you had a really bad day, forgot to put a stop loss on, you lost half your account. All right, this is why risk management is very important. If you start taking big losses, you only lost 50%. But now, because your account balance is $500, not $1,000, you now need to double your account to be back at where you were. You now need to make 100% return off, off your trades to be back to where you started. So this is why risk management is very, very important. You need to control your losses, all right? So play around with this. Honestly, I suggest using it on a daily basis, weekly basis, um, just to see where you're at and what you can actually afford to lose on your trades. But um, yeah, those are the three tools that BabyPip offers that I find are very important, especially if you're a new trader starting out. Add these to your trading analysis, to your trading plan, and um, yeah, you'll see you'll see a big difference in your in your trading. All right. So now, what do we got next? We got investing.com. So this one I like their economic calendar the best, honestly. Um a lot of people use Forex Factory. Not a huge fan. I find investing.com has a very good cal um economic calendar that auto updates you don't need to refresh it. The numbers will just appear and they're very clear. You can adjust the calendar the way you want with which um, countries you want to display, um, the high impact. Um, you can ignore the low impact, but we'll look at that in a second. 
The next tool, Forex volatility. Third one, Forex correlations. All right, so let's pull up investing.com. So here we got their website. You wanna to go to the tools tab and then click on that. It'll bring you to this page here. You could really and truly just click your economic calendar here. However, once you get there, pull it up. Right now, I have it set to only high impact news. So in 41 minutes, New Zealand is going to be releasing their employment change numbers. So if I'm trading the New Zealand dollar, I'm going to want to know this. I mean, any pair really related um, to the US dollar, because that's what it's going to affect a lot. Um, you're going to want to know about news in general, but the New Zealand dollar will be impacted the most on this news. All right. So you can adjust it, um, you know, set medium impact news. Once that loads, you'll see there was quite a bit of news today. Um, Euro had GDP numbers, but they don't consider it super high impact news. Um, the only one today was that employment change numbers. But this one here, you want to use it because, you know, let's say you are in a trade and you got a 20 pip stop loss. Sometimes when high impact news comes out, it could spike 20 pips. And then you're out of that trade because you just got stopped out for no reason because you weren't paying attention to the news. And you didn't know that they were releasing something that is very important to your currency that you're trading. All right. So, you know, you can, you can stay in your trade. That's totally up to you, but be aware of what's happening within the markets. When things get released, it will move the market. So just know that. All right. So this is the one I recommend um, on investing.com. Now their next tool, Forex Volatility, this one here, I find very interesting. So I'm gonna adjust this to 13 weeks. That's gonna give me the trailing three quarters, or sorry, three months, the trailing quarter, right? So the past three months. Now, on average, the range from the high to the low of every day for the euro is going to be, sorry, for the week is 75 pips. All right. Now on GBP USD, this one has a little bit more range is going to be your average is going to be 119 pips. All right. And it's going to move roughly 91%. All right. Now, Let's see, um, in the past six months, it has, volatility has gone up a little bit. There is wider price movements. It is coming down slightly now, but in the past six months, um, it's been roughly, well, 119 pips, all right? That was the average. Now, this one here is actually very important to know. Note this one for sure. Um, each pair is gonna have a time of the day that's more volatile. For the pound, you're going to see spikes. So seven GMT, if you're trading Eastern time, that's gonna be 2 a.m., all right? So as soon as London starts opening, you got a big spike. Nothing really happening during the Asian session. But as soon as London opens, you got a huge spike in volatility. So if you're trading the pound pairs, you want to be aware of that. Because overnight, like I said, if you're trading Eastern time zone, you're sleeping. This is 3 a.m., 2 a.m., right? You're sleeping. So this could swing you out if you're in a trade, all right? It, you, you need to be aware that there will be high volatility while you're sleeping. All right, and then kind of slows down a little bit. Still still pretty volatile, but does slow down a little bit in between the London and the New York Open, all right? 
And then once London, once New York session opens again, it picks up and then drops off as the London session starts closing and it's just the New York session trading. So now let's see, because we have very low volatility during the Asian session. Let's pull up the Aussie yen, right? So now during the Asian session, we have a big spike in volatility here. So if you're trading AUD JPY, you're going to be a want, you're going to want to be aware that I think probably this is 8 a.m. or sorry, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm not 100% sure, but that's usually when the volatility picks up. Um, so you got a big spike right there for any Aussie dollar um, pair. Like let's go AUD USD, little spike there, right? Now, if you're trading any uh, yen pair, you should see higher volatility as well, right? All right, so time of the day, very important. Your average pips, very important as well, because you're not going to want to, um, you know, if it's moved past your average true range, you can add reversion to mean to your trading plan. That's a whole nother topic, but um, your average true range, that's where it should be moving. If it extends past that, you know, it, the likelihood of it reverting back is pretty high, but that that's for another video. All right. So now let's pull up Forex correlation. We got, let's say Euro USD on a daily chart for the past 10 days. All right. The two most positive Positively correlated pairs are going to be your New Zealand dollar USD and your AUD USD. All right, 78% and 66%. And these are your three charts here. You can see they're not perfect, but they have over the, you know, for the majority, they have moved in the same direction. All right, if we go further, 200 days, you're going to see a higher correlation. You got 96 for AUD USD, 95 for J, uh, GBP USD. All right. So now you see that they are over the long term more correlated than in the short term. Um, and then if you wanted to look at negative correlated pairs, you got, uh, let's use dollar Swiss and dollar CAD. All right. 99% for the dollar Swiss, negative correlation. So if Euro USD is moving up, USD um, Swiss francs is going to be moving down. All right. And same with dollar CAD. That one will be moving down as well while USD or while Euro moves up. You can see that in the chart here. So play around with this. You can use five minute time frame, 15 minute time frame, 30 hourly, five hour, whatever, and then adjust accordingly for how many periods you want to look at and then choose whatever pair you want to analyze. So this is important to know because if you're adding, let's say you're trading two, three pairs at a time, but you're adding three highly correlated pairs, now you've increased your risk on this trade. You have not diversified at all. You've actually increased your risk. And now if price moves against you, um, all three of those pairs are gonna be losing, all right? So you're going to want to know which ones are more correlated to each other. And if you're trading multiple pairs at a time, try to avoid high correlated pairs. All right. So that's a tool you can use. Um, I do highly suggest using this one. This one is actually very important to know. Um, once you start understanding the different pairs, you'll understand which ones are more correlated to each other. But um, correlations do change over time as well. Uh, with different news and different things that are happening, especially on the intraday charts. All right, so be aware of that. Long term, they're going to be major, like majorly the same over the long term, but intraday, be aware that they do fluctuate. All right, so now, next one we got, barchart.com. So this one here, this is a Forex map. 
Let's take a look at it. Once you get to barchark.com, you're gonna to wanna to go to currencies over here. Once you get there, uh, Forex market map. All right, so now this is gonna show in the past day, which pair has been the strongest, all right? And it is a free tool, so there is gonna be ads. Um, however, let's say I'm looking at this right now. Clearly, I could see that the Canadian dollar today, only today was the strongest currency out of all your major currencies. The weakest was your Aussie dollar, all right? Now, it also shows you how much it's moved against other currencies. So the Aussie CAD, that one is up 0.77%. It's going to look slightly different because I know you're probably used to looking at it as this here, right? The Aussie CAD this way. This is how a majority of people will trade it. Um, but yeah, it's down 0.77%. So it doesn't show you how many pips, it just shows you how much percent. However, um, this will change day to day. And let's say news releases, and all of a sudden there's positive news for the Aussie dollar. This could easily spike up, and then you'll see um, strength in the Aussie dollar. So this will help you determine which currencies at the moment are stronger than others. And if you're looking to buy the Aussie dollar, but let's say you're looking to trade Aussie CAD right now, but you're looking to buy the Aussie dollar, is that really the best idea? Maybe if it's on a structure area and you got a nice signal, possibly, it is very possible that it does start moving back up. But at the moment, it is the weakest currency. So just be aware of that. All right. So that's barchart.com. Um, this one, I personally leave this open all the time. This one's just on a separate um, separate uh, tab over here. I leave that this one open all the time um, just so I could kind of get a good understanding of what's happening in the market right now and which currencies are stronger and weaker than others. All right. So now, what do we got? Trading view. This is a charting platform. Um, this is personally what I use to plot my uh, my tools on my my uh, structure areas, things like that, and analyze the chart. Basically, this is the platform that I personally use, and many people around the world use this platform as well. It is probably the best. Um, honestly, way better than MetaTrader, but that's on an that's on another topic but anyway so this one here this is going to be your technical analysis tool so they're going to if we pull it up here they're going to show you um different strengths based on different factors and we'll we'll get into that in just a moment here how do i get into that i forget uh, so yeah you go markets currencies major currencies and then let's say I wanted to analyze Euro USD. I'm going to click that one there. If anybody knows of a faster way to get to this tool, let me know. Um, I'm pretty sure actually that you can get to it right here as well. Wow, my computer's going slow. Um, yeah, so let's say I'm looking at Euro USD, right? Pretty sure if you pull this up, it's going to show you the strength right here. All right. So, but this is just going to show you on one time frame. It's not going to show you the in depth like I'm about to show you. All right. Um, but it does show you yearly, it's up 11% um, year to date minus one percent um but yes yeah, so once you go to more technical tools so this is an easier way i just thought of that after but this is an easier way to see it 
So let's say I wanted to see it on the daily chart. All right, so summary is gonna be oscillators and moving averages added together. So now we got 12 indicators, 12 oscillator, or three oscillators and nine moving averages giving us a sell signal. Eight are neutral, five are giving a buy signal. So basically what they're using, they're using a 10 period exponential, 10 period simple, 20, 20, 30, 30, 50, 50, 100, 100, 200, and 200. And then they got your Ichimoku cloud and volume weighted moving averages, and then your whole moving average. So those are gonna be all the moving averages that are um, analyzed. Trading View does this by, its, by itself. You don't need to do anything. You just pull this up quickly and it will see where it's at on the chart. All right, now for your oscillators, you got red load strength, stochastics, commodity channel index, uh, your ADI, awesome oscillator, and then all the other ones that you see there. So basically what it's gonna do on each time frame, let's say I wanted to go down to a one hour time frame. Now if the moving averages are giving me a strong sell signal, 11 are saying sell, one is neutral, three are a buy. All right, so you can see here, anything above the 20 moving average is all giving me a sell signal, which means prices below those moving averages. It just recently, likely, um, I haven't looked at the chart in a minute, but likely just moved past the 10 period moving average. And that's why this one is giving a buy signal. All right, so now, um, you're, it's going to show your oscillators as well. You got two buy signals. The rest are all neutral. All right. So now, uh, let's say I wanted to go to a five minute time frame. See, now it's saying a buy on basically all of them. A very strong buy for moving averages, kind of neutral for the oscillators. So this one, you can add this um, to your trading plan based on the time frame that you're trading with, right? If you are using the five minute time frame, what's it doing right now? What are all these indicators actually telling you without having to put them on your chart? You can easily just pull this up and it'll tell you. All right, if you're planning to hold the trade overnight, maybe use the four hour, see where the strength is, right? See what all these indicators are telling you and make your decision. If it's giving you a good signal and you know, you still want to get in, just be aware that currently right now, the strength is saying sell. So be prepared that you may potentially get stopped out on that trade. All right. Anyway, that's that one. What do we got next? Last and final tool. It's going to be your latest news stories on forexfactory.com. As I mentioned before, Forex Factory, a lot of people do use their calendar. I'm not a huge fan of it, but for their news stories, one of the best that I've that I've came across anyway. Um, they they stream news from a whole bunch of different websites, and you'll see just in a minute. Um, it's not just one news article that it relates to; it references. A whole bunch of different um, different websites and different articles that get posted. So you're going to want to come to news right here, and then it will show you your latest news. So 21 minutes ago was their latest one. Um, however, we are a little bit later in the day. Earlier in the day, you're going to have more news coming out, um, but it will show you basically these yellow ones. These are going to be medium impact. When you see a red little file folder here, that means it's a high impact news. And that one there, you should probably open it up, read through it, see what happened, especially if it's related to the currency that you're trading. All right, because um, high impact news like that could impact your trade. All right, so get a good understanding of what's actually happening and keep up to date with your currencies and the um, the news that's happening and being released about those currencies, all right, about those countries. All right, so 
those are the tools that I got for you today. Let's take a quick uh, look at the summary. So the first thing we did, we looked at babypips.com and that's gonna give you a good understanding of your profit and loss. All right, now, then you're gonna have um, adjusting for volatility. That's on investing.com. Um, you know, understanding where your currencies, what time your currencies move the most and how much they move as well. All right, then identifying correlations. So this one, you don't want to over leverage on a positively correlated pair. Um, if you're trading, like I said, three pairs at a time, they're all positively correlated, price moves against you, they're all gonna be losing, all right? So be aware of that and understand your correlations between different currency pairs. Now, uh, the next one, finding strength and weakness. So this was on um, barchart.com as well as TradingView, all right? So this one here, you're going to want to understand which currencies are stronger and which ones are weaker at the moment, all right? Then finally, we looked at um, avoiding unnecessary losses. So this one was um, based on the economic calendar. And if there's a high impact news that's scheduled to be released, you don't wanna get stopped out just because you didn't look at the calendar and understand that there was news coming out. You don't want that to happen. Trust me, been there, done that. It's not fun to just be spiked out of a trade and then it reverts back and it would have been a winner had I known that there was news coming out, adjusted my stop loss accordingly, um, adjusted my position size accordingly, things like that, right? Um, you don't wanna get stopped out of a trade for no reason. No one wants to lose money because they just didn't see that there was news coming out. Like uh, that's honestly the worst, trust me. Been there, done that. So add that to your trading plan as well. And now keep up to date. Keep up to date with the news that's going on around the world. Um, everything will affect currencies in different ways. Um, and yeah, so add these to your trading plan. Add these to your trading analysis on a daily basis. Um, and I promise you, you will see an improvement in your trading. It will help level up your trading. All right. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Happy trading. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Um, we'll be posting more content just like this one. All right, take care.